Hello, and welcome to Cry Havoc Wargaming, dedicated to bringing you the uncommon. For those of you who haven't met me, my name is Ron, and today's episode, we're going to teach you how to play Pulp 7 TV by Crooked Dice. Let's get started. Crooked Dice is dedicated to bringing cult television and pulp movies and literature alive by their rules, 7TV. Some of you may be familiar with 7TV Spy-Fi. Uh, they have recently released both an apocalypse game and now 7TV Pulp. Uh, this is a game that um, allows for lots of alterations and changes. The basic characters or the uh, standard casting uh, can be used generically to represent the characters you want with the figures you may already have or any of the figures that are provided by Crooked Dice Designs. Uh, they do an excellent set of figures on their own right. The game is different from a lot of other pulp games because of the sort of metagame feel of it where most other games are assumed to be taking place in a real world somewhere. This game does not go that route, but rather it embraces freely the fact that it is a pulpish movie genre. Uh, and so some things they'll use terms from movies within some of the actions they take. Some of those represent those various tropes and stereotypes of the pulp genre, whether it be the original pulp of the 30s and 40s, or, or what our parents may have grown up with uh, on early days of television, or whether it's the modern versions, such as Indiana Jones uh, or The Mummy. Um, what we're gonna do now is see the game in action. So let's go to the gaming table. So the game we're gonna play today is Battle. This is a basic game, the uh, typical just one side against another. Uh, we're playing it on a 3x3 three three table. That sets the number of cliffhanger cards we have. The cliffhanger cards work to count the length of the game. They also provide certain um, situations uh, which will get usually more impressive as we go along. Those are divided into Act 1, Act 2, and Finale. And typically the effects those cards cause increase as you get later into the game. Uh, there are a series of uh, five little markers around the table. Those are all numbered on the upside down. Um, those numbers uh, have to do with certain effects in this particular game. And those are objectives, goals that we're going to take towards the victory conditions of this game. They also represent some other things. Uh, number five is going to be a MacGuffin. That's an a objective of special interest. And unlike previous games, uh, this game has a MacGuffin deck. And so we pulled a MacGuffin, and what we have is glowing briefcase. So that's what they're after here, uh, the two sides. Uh, the sides we're looking at, you may recognize from the Pulp Alley game. I have the crew of the SS Venture, and I have um, my Legio Patrio Nostra, which are renegade uh, French Foreign Legion. This game, um, rather than creating their own cards, you can do that if you want. You can make cast-specific cards to a cast you create or you can use what they call standard casting. That's what we're using for today's game. So um, Captain Inglehart is going to be represented by the Intrepid Adventurer card. Jane Driscoll is going to be the stalwart sidekick. Choi is prize fighter. Uh, the cook, Lumpy, is uh, working stiff. And then Benjamin Hayes, here he is. Ben Hayes is deckhand. On the other side, the heartless warmonger uh, for LaForge, Twisted Syncophant is going to be Marcel. Uh, Shock Trooper Commander, that's going to be uh, LaForge. Uh, crap, pardon. Uh, McGowan, that's going to be McGowan. And um, the Shock Trooper Sergeant, uh, that is Samson. Uh, the Shock Trooper is Martel. And then the Doctor will be Doc Ward. Those are our basic, uh, our basic starting sets. Uh, I've already laid the figures out on the table as per the Senate rules for the game. We've already pulled the gadgets. The SS crew has a... Let's go ahead and get the game started. So we roll for initiative, and it goes to, to the Legion. Uh, they get to act first. The, uh, therefore, uh, two plot points go to the other side. The loser of that initial roll start get two plot points to start with. Unlike in Pulp Alley, where the objectives are called plot points, plot points in this game are things that give you your activations. 
and allow you spend them to activate your characters. And what we're going to do now is we're going to pull the very first cliffhanger card. And this card is Chase Sequence. Choose up the three extras in your cast that are not under a status or knocked down. Each of these models can immediately move up to three inches towards any opposing star or co-star model. These are all extra, so I'm going to move them all three inches to start. That's um, now we've already got the plot points. You get two plot points per star in your cast, one per co-star, and then half for each of your extras. And these are used, like I mentioned, to activate. We're going to start by activating the um, Heartless Warmonger. Now, uh, he, I spend one to activate him, but uh, when I do that, he's got uh, a lead or two. This allows him to um, activate two others within six inches. So he's going to go ahead and activate uh, the figures that are next to him as well. Uh, the movement in the game is six inches. So we're going to go ahead and move for six inches. I can move move if I like. Now if you do that, if you move move, you can't play the, the objective when you arrive. Um, so we can't take that objective yet, uh, but he is there on it. Um, and like I mentioned, it gives uh, two free activations over here. So we're going to move the Twisted Syncophant. Um, he's going to also move, move towards that objective. And we'll send the doctor over there. Um, so those have all activated. Uh, that's important to keep in mind that uh, using those activations like I just did, that counts as their activation. They just didn't have to pay for it. So they can't, they can't later move again. But these guys got that free move, and they still can activate. Um, the uh, start shock trooper commander by activating him i can activate everybody else in that unit by spending one more which i will do now remember these um plot points are also not just used for activation they're used to add to your attacks and your defenses so you you want to try to keep some of them pulled up you don't want to use them all um, you want to try to conserve what you can uh, my shock troop commander is this fellow he's gonna move move or it's cover, and they're going to do the same. I think. So the first thing we do is we take another uh, cliffhanger card. We get matinee I idol stars and co-stars activate for free this turn. Uh, then we add up to get find out how many plot points we get. Uh, that's two for the star, one for the sidekick. That's three. Intrepid adventurer is going to go ahead and um, he's going to go right for their star and for that that point going to come here. He's only going to move for six uh, because he is going to shoot. Now this is one of the places where this game very much varies from uh, other games and that is the, the way the um, defense and shooting works. I'm going to shoot. The, um, the opponent has to roll a defense roll and he rolls the defense roll first. Now he automatically gets a die to do that. He's going to add his defense to that die. Uh, the defense roll for uh, the Heartless Warmonger is 10. So he's gonna, he's already looking at at least 11 points. Uh, for me to hit, I have to do better than that. But um, the way the dice rolling works is he can add to that. This is what I was talking about when I referred to saving plot points. And I'm going to go ahead and use one of those, I think. So we'll spend one plot point. That'll give us an additional die. So he's going to be rolling two dies for his defense, plus 10. Now, these don't work the way you think. Oh. Now, this is what I meant by it not working the way you think. You don't add up the dice that you just rolled. Uh, instead, the, um, you take the highest dice, which in this case is the three, and then you would have added any other successes. And what I mean by a success is the, uh, any die that was four, five, or six would have counted as one. Um, so this, this counts as nothing. That only counts as a three, and you add the 10, and you end up with 13. Uh, I'm trying to get, here's an example. If we'd rolled that, this would have been a six, and that would have added 1 for 7, plus 10 for his defense. So it would have been at 17. But he didn't roll that. Uh, so instead, he 
he is at 13 because he had a plus 10 and he rolled a 3. So 13 is the target that I need to hit. Uh, shooting with the, um, the revolver, uh, I need to... Uh, I'll need to, I have a nine, a plus nine for the weapon already, so I have to roll at least a four to hit him. But I can do the same thing, and I'm going to do that. I'm going to add at least one die to this roll. I'm going to add two dice to this roll, just based on how my rolling tends to work. Whoops. So, he rolled a six, and then a five, which counts as a one, so that's seven, uh, added to his nine, which gives a sixteen, so that is, in fact, a hit. The hit uh, with a um, revolver does a negative one health. Stars all have three hits. He can take uh, another two of those before he's actually in any kind of trouble. Uh, that's the first activation. My uh, co-star can also activate for free. Co-star is going to go try to take this over here. Can't make it. Cannot get to that plot point quite. Might as well move all the way up to it. None of my other people have um, have firearms. We're going to be a little out out firearmed in this, I think. Uh, we'll go ahead and uh, activate Lumpy. Uh, Lumpy's going to come over here and get cover. And we'll go ahead and activate Choi. Choi's going to get cover over here behind the truck. And lastly, Ben Hayes. And so he also gets cover over there behind the truck. Uh, so that uh, ends that turn. So the Legion pulls a card. They get opening crawl. All move actions are halved this turn. Oh, that's not good. Um, they collect their plot points. Uh, they are still collecting the same number. So he does. He does do that. He's going to close with Inglehard with his sword. So Inglehard uh, has to uh, decide what he's going to do. His defense is plus nine. Um, he can uh, decide to spend his last remaining. I'm going to do that. It's risky. I'm going to spend my last plot point to add a die to that. So we roll. Uh, that was a waste. Um, he gets 14. 14 is what... Uh, the Heartless Warmonger needs with his sword. He's got a plus eight. He's going to go ahead and spend a point for an extra die. Uh, absolute waste. Uh, he gets uh, nine, so that's a miss. No hits. No hits with his sword. I'm going to go ahead and activate the Shock Trooper Commander. That's a plot point for that, but he can spend another two to activate all of his little command around him. They could fire a Driscoll, so that's what we're going to do. We're going to do the Shock Trooper Commander first. He's firing with a semi-automatic. Are they within range? Uh, that one is not. So the Commander is actually not in range, so he cannot fire. Uh, but the other two can. The one's got an SMG with a, a range of 16. And the other has a rifle with a range of 24. Uh, we'll go ahead and do the uh, SMG first. This is a blast range of 3, uh, which means it could actually get both of them. We'll go ahead and look at the uh, defense first for Driscoll. Driscoll's defense is 9. I can't add to it. I don't have anything else to add to it. So... That's going to be 13. 13 for Driscoll. And the cook is 7. That's 11. So 11 and 13. Um, he's got to roll his attack. He's going to go ahead and add a die. Uh, his uh, attack with that weapon is 7. And adding a die was a waste, but 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. He does not get Driscoll, but he does get the cook. So Lumpy is already out of the game. Axed, as it were. Lumpy is down. Uh, and that was the submachine gun. Now the rifle's going to shoot. Again, I can't add anything to it, so 
Roll the die. That's uh, 14 for defense. For Driscoll, uh, the rifle is at a 6. Who? Oh, 7. Not even close. So um, that's a miss. And uh, those activations are done. We could go ahead and do our sycophant. Uh, now, he has something called Slime Mover, which treats uh, this as if it was an attack from the rear, even though it isn't. I'm going to go ahead and shoot the pistol there. He's going to activate. Pay to activate. He's going to aim first. So she is at a disadvantage. She's going to have to roll 4 plus her 9, so that's 13. He is... Uh, Striking, he gets a plus one to this automatically. His to hit with the semi-automatic is seven, so he's at eight. I'm gonna go ahead and spend another one of those to get two dice. Oh, and that's the kind of hits you want. That was a six. So that counts as seven. He was already at an eight. That's 15. That is over. The um, semi-automatic does one health. One of the, the uh, things you can do in this game, and one of the tactics that's sometimes useful, is you can decide to pull two cards. That makes the, basically speeds you through the game quicker. If you do that, both sides get two plot points just for that having happened. Uh, you don't read both of them, you only read the second of them. Um, and that's hogging the limelight. Stars and co-stars must not end their turn on hard or soft cover or behind in obstacles. So we can't we got to be sure we're not in cover by the end of this turn. That's going to be rough because a bunch of my guys are in cover. We take our plot points. Um, I've got two for the, uh, the leader, one for uh, my co-star, and I now only have two followers. So you can see I'm already starting to suffer from getting less plot points. Uh, the first thing we want to deal with, however, is this fist fight uh, right in here. I have a choice of using a bullwhip, which causes no damage, but uh, can capture the opponent. It's also unwieldy. Or I can brawl, which also does no damage, but it causes weakened. A weakened is a disadvantage that causes other problems during the game, but it can also, uh, if, if you do weakened twice on somebody, it will cause them uh, to take hits. Of course, again, this is a, a star, so he can take a lot of hits. We may want to use one of our special effects. One of the things, the problem with this game is if you don't play regularly, it's hard to remember what the cards do. Um, I actually have a special effect here called Fight Back, which uh, allows uh, an automatic fight back when you are fought. So I should have had a fight back last turn on um, La Forge. I'm going to go ahead and take that. I uh, hope you'll have forgive me for that. Uh, but we haven't actually done anything this turn yet. So his defense is 10. He could have added to that. I'm going to go ahead and add the two that were here to that. That's going to give him uh, three dice to add to his 10. Uh, he's got five, three, and three. So the threes did nothing but the five. So he's at 15. My brawl is at eight. Uh, six. Six plus nine is 15. All right, so now back to the normal activity of the game. Um, uh, he's going to go ahead and attack him again. i spend one point to get two dice. This is a uh, forge uh, added to his 10. Um, not getting a lot of the additional add-ons there. Um, that's 16, though. I have to beat 16. Uh, I only have a plus 8. I'm going to go ahead and add 2 myself. Um, that's going to give me three dice. All right, so eight, uh, 13, and that would have been 14. I do not beat it. I cannot take him on that. I could have done lucky. I could have re-rolled one. Oh, I'm just going to re-roll. When I was at 14, okay, nothing. I, I get to re-roll one dice because I'm, one die because I'm lucky. Uh, but that wasn't enough to do anything. He's still there. I'm going to go ahead and activate uh, the deck hand, oh, no, the prize fighter. I'm going to uh, activate the prize fighter, Choi. She's going to come around into the fight. I'm going to go ahead and spend the die at the last plot point, I guess. Uh, this is 10, 14. Um, 
So she needs a 14 to hit. She's at a 9 normally. I'm going to go ahead and spend a plot point for her. Uh, so she's at 9. She needs to be 14. Uh, she's got it. That's 14. And that would make it 15. So she hits him. She does another damage. Oh, wait, what does that actually do? She probably doesn't. No, she does. Martial arts, negative 1 health. Most of the hand-to-hand -hand stuff does weakening and stuff like that. It doesn't do uh, health. Uh, but this one did. He is down. He's, he's suffering too. I'm going to go ahead and use the free Radio Watch gadget card to activate our hero over here. Uh, she's going to go ahead and shoot at uh, uh, Marcel there. Uh, Marcel is the, the sycophant. His defense is nine. Uh, I don't, do they have anything you have to spend? They do not. So he rolls nine. He only gets 12. Uh, she could still spend, and she's going to. I do need to spend. She needs to be nine. She's only got six. Six. So that's ten. She's got it. Uh, she hits him, Marcel. Uh, Marcel is a uh, sidekick, so he's not down. And I could activate one more, but I don't think I'm going to. Uh, I think we'll go ahead and end that turn there. Um, so we will pull a card. Models in base contact with hard or soft cover may make a free shoot attack at uh, a negative one strike. Wow, that's going to happen. Uh, we've got all of these people over here. So this is these three guys shooting behind the well there. Um, they're going to be shooting at uh, Driscoll. One of them, are they still all out of range? No, they're now all in range. So the commander, uh, he's shooting um, a semi-automatic. He has a seven with that. He can spend one of these to get an automatic plus one. So he's now at eight. She, her defense is nine. So, oh, should have done it. She's at 10. He's already at eight without even rolling, so this is gonna hit. Yeah, that hit, that does another point. She couldn't take that. She's down. She's down. The others don't have targets, so they cannot shoot. Heartless Warmonger is going to activate. His leader, too, allows him to activate up to six inches away. Uh, nobody's within that, uh, so he can't use that. But he can amplify the, um, the attack. So we're going to do that. We're going to go ahead and um, spend two on his activation. Activate him with the sword. He's going to attack uh, Inglehart, the captain there, the intrepid adventurer. Adventure's defense is 10. He's going to spend the last of their plot points for two dice. So he rolls his defense roll, and he gets just six. So 10. So he's at 16. He gets hit by the heartless warmonger with his sword. He's at eight already. Uh, that's 13. Um, so that does not. Let's activate the twisted sycophant. He's going to go ahead and take that objective there first off. It is three. That does not hurt him, but it gives him another two objectives. That was a special action. He's going to head over here to steal this one. Doc's going to stay there, I think. We'll go ahead and uh, activate these three guys. For it's one to activate the commander, two uh, to move the others. They're going to uh, come around this way. They're going to go around this way because that. Remember, there's quicksand here. Um, so they're going to come on over this way. Start getting ready to fire once that melee comes to an end. And that is the end of that. I pull the next cliffhanger card. I'm going to go ahead and pull two again. Stock footage. Choose one cliffhanger card from the discard pile and play it immediately. I'm going to go ahead and pull chase sequence. Play that one immediately. That's going to allow me to move. 
So this fight over here is getting pretty nasty. Uh, if we lose anyone uh, in a turn, we're going to start having to check for getting axed. That's how bad things are going for us right now. Uh, if you drop down to uh, losing half of your people, then you you have to start rolling spirit rolls. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and activate um, the uh, Intrepid Adventurer. I'm going to go ahead and do the Bull Whip. Uh, that's a plus 10. I'm going to spend an extra add on it. It's, his defense is 10. He's going to spend one for two dice. Uh, six, that's 16. I was spending for two dice. I'm also at 10. Uh, did not meet him, so I do not get him entangled in that whip. Um, well, that hurts. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and activate the um, the prize fighter. I'm going to go ahead and do uh, a haymaker, I think. Um, so we spend my point for that. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and um, he's going to roll. He's going to go ahead and add to his defense roll. Why not? Uh, these are just not going anywhere. 14. Uh, I'm going to add. That's 14 is what I need. I'm going to go ahead and add to my attack. This is um, Choi here. Choi gets. Oh, Choi does not beat that. That is not good. That was supposed to happen. Spending my last power point to activate Ben Hayes. Um, he unfortunately, our enemy, still has a power point. So he's going to go ahead and spend that. He rolls. He's got 16. Ben has nothing he can add to his crowbar attack. Uh, six, six plus seven, so he's still at 13. So um, cannot do it. Uh, not good. Not good, people. Uh, that ends that turn. Uh, they might as well start speeding up because why not? Um, behind the mask. Uh, your star may swap places with an extra from your cast. The star is not subject to free strikes. Stars and extras cannot swap places into, out of, or within vehicles. Um, wow. He can actually rescue himself here. Um, and I'm going to do it. So, boom. They switch places. He switches places with the doctor. Um, and now he's out of that fist fight that he was slowly being whittled down in. Um, both sides get two points because he expended two cards. Now uh, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to activate um, the, uh, the leader who's here. He's now within six inches of, um, of both of those groups. The thing is, if he activates the leader here, the leader here can't use his leader to activate all of them. So I'm not sure that's the best move for him to do. The, um, the best move here is probably to go ahead and just move him. Um, and to take his own action, of course. So he's going to take an action. He's, um, he's going to go ahead over here. Be ready to lead pretty much anybody if he wants to next time. See, he can only act, uh, do this activation thing to a maximum of three, so he couldn't have moved, he could have moved all three of them and not him, but uh, I, think, I think this is the move. So he's gonna come over here. He can't actually shoot into that melee, I don't think. I have to check that. I don't remember if he can shoot in the melees. I don't think he can. So I guess I will stay there. Um, but he activated Marcel. Marcel's gonna move and take this plot point. Uh, that's two, that gives another two points to them, uh, and they now have two plot points. And we now know that the other, the MacGuffin or the Quicksand are one of those. I'll go ahead and activate the leader here with two. So that activates him and that whole unit. Um, I'll go ahead and uh, just in case, I think I want to start moving people out of there for double move over here, and I'll move Samson over here, and he'll come around, 
to check and see what this is. And it is the quicksand. So he has ended, ooh, this could be a problem. They've come forward here, they've found the quicksand, um, and that affects a somewhat large area. So that's not particularly good um, for, it falls first to, uh, it's well within the three inches. Oh no, uh, the leader's out of it. Um, but um, I have to roll plus four for the quicksand is, that's uh, 10, oh, and six. So he loses to the quicksand. He cannot make any further actions. He ends his move action within the last five template. If, if by the end of the player's following turn, this model's still touching the template, the controlling player, so if he doesn't get out of here next turn, then he uh, dies, he is sucked down into the quicksand. That's how that works. So he's, uh, he's in that position. Uh, the others have moved over here. They really can't shoot into that. I'm gonna go ahead and uh, stop the turn there. And we're going to go and see what happens with this. Activate uh, the boss. He's going to fight at uh, the dock there. Uh, the dock uh, dock's going to go ahead and... Uh, one, two, three, four. I'm going to go ahead and spend four, I think, because he's just not very good. He's only got a three. Uh, so four will give him uh, his one die uh, and four, four dice for his plus three. He's not a fighter, you see. Okay, so he gets, he gets uh, two fives and a six. So that's uh, a nine, uh, 19. 19, that's probably gonna do it for him. I probably can't beat that. Um, I have, uh, I'll go ahead and spend two. I don't know if that actually works. My attack with this weapon is only, uh, I'm gonna hit him. I could use the bull whip again. Probably can't, it's unwieldy. I'm gonna go ahead and use the eight. Not good. Uh, that's only 12, so I do not take him. Um, I'm going to attack him with the crowbar, activating... Oh, we're going to activate uh, the uh, working stiff. She has a disadvantage because she's attacking them from behind. She's also only got a three, though. Um, the... Uh, let's see what does the forge have in defense. Forge's defense is eight. I don't think I need to spend anything for that. Well, why not? I can. I've got lots of stuff over there. Um, okay, so I did not need that. It's 14, 15. Uh, she cannot do that. Whoops, I need to roll one die. Yeah, she hardly hurts them. Um, not good. And that leaves the prize fighter. I'm going to go ahead and use the prize fighter. Uh, the dock. I'm going to go ahead and do that again. That, it wasn't so bad, right? One, two, three, four, five. The dock gets. That's eight. Nine, ten, he gets 11. Um, Price fighter has nothing he can add to this roll uh, that he can do. Uh, hit him for eight. So we'll just roll that. Eight. Ooh, 14. 14. What did you say there? We got 13. Um, so he is punched back an inch. That's what Haymaker does. Uh, allows a punch. It doesn't do any health or anything, though. It just pushes him back. Um, uh, so that uh, that's that activation. Now the others do want to end the game, so they're going to pull two cards. 
they get shake the camera. All extras are knocked down to this turn. Um, Uh, they have to get up from that status, so that's awkward. It also means they're on the ground for the attacks on this. Uh, on this, um, We both get two points for them having done that. And they still get five because they're not losing people. All right, so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to activate... Um, the leader dude, he's now got a clear line of fire. Uh, he also can activate uh, both Samson and uh, uh, Marcel. So the first thing he's going to do is aim, and then he's going to shoot. Uh, he's going to shoot at Engel, uh, Engelbert. So Engelbert uh, is going to go ahead and use the two he just got for his defense. Um, the uh, that gives him three. His defense normally is nine, isn't it? No, it's ten. So he only gets sixteen. That's not bad. Um, I may need to think about rolling. I did not. I'm going to go ahead and spend three. One, two, three, four. Got to beat sixteen. Uh, the weapon is eight. Um, so that makes 14, 15. Did not beat 16. Came close. Oh, except that a plus one. So uh, ties, though. Um, I think ties count. So that's a hit. So yeah, that counts as a hit. Our hero is shot, but he's still okay. He hasn't been shot a lot. Now we have the activations of these other folk. Go ahead and shoot. Um, Samson has that blast weapon. Um, it's gonna do everybody in that range there. He can do this on everyone. Um, hmm. I got nothing to add either. So, plus 10 for uh, Inglehart. He's going to have 15. And Prize Fighter, 7. That's only 8. That's not good. And Ben is already at 8. Uh, so, 13, 15, 13, 8. 13, 15, 8. Um, Let's go ahead and spend two for three dice. The, uh, the thing hits on a seven. So that's 13, 14. So everybody is hit except for Engel, Engelhart. And those guys all take one, so they're gone. Um, yeah. Yeah, that's probably going to cost the game right there. Um, we're not even done with his action, and that stops. Uh, that's going to call for a uh, a roll. Over here we have Marcel. Marcel's going to involve, get himself into the fight. Come over here. Spend an action to do that. He can't add anything to it. I can't defend anything to it, this shot. So Engel Engelhart's got a plus. Uh, he's got a ten already. I rolled a 4, so it's 14. Marcel. Marcel semi-automatic is a 7. Uh, so just the one die. 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. Oh, close. Does not get him. Uh, and that's because we've used everything. Um, the uh, Engelhorn. Oh, i got to check, actually. We gotta check first to see if the cast is strikes. One moment. So uh, things look pretty bad. I've only got two uh, characters left on the good guy's side. Um, we had to roll to see if the cast was axed. Anytime you have more characters gone than you have remaining, 
and we do. We've lost three. We only have two remaining. You have to make a roll on your spirit. I needed to roll three or over, and I've got five. So uh, we're still there. We're still holding on. Um, but can we make it through another turn? Uh, that's, that's the question that remains to be seen. So we're only going to play one card. Uh, you just can't afford to take, the, take more than that. We get race to the finish. Each model counts one movement action as a free action this turn. Um, that's, that's not bad. Uh, I only have three points. I'm going to go ahead and activate Inglehorn here. Uh, Inglehorn is going to come over here and take what he hopes is the MacGuffin. And it is. It is the MacGuffin. Uh, we have the glowing briefcase. I'm not going not to be able to use this special action, because uh, I just used a special action. Um, so I'm not going to be able to use its special powers. But at least I have taken something which might help the victory, <laughs> the victory odds here just a little. Um, the, uh, I forgot I also get two points because the next card is a finale. It is in fact the finale. Um, I can go ahead and activate and stand up here. Uh, but I can go ahead and shoot one of the two that are down. Um, those are both disadvantaged. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and shoot uh, this one. They can't add anything to the roll because they're on the ground. The one I'm talking about is the uh, commander. His defense is eight. Six, so that's 14. I'm going to go ahead and spend three. Um, her attack's only three. That's six, seven, eight, nine. And that would be two, nine, ten, eleven. That was, pro I probably said thirteen, so I probably did not make it. I don't, I don't remember. Um, doesn't really matter at this point because I don't think I can win the game. Uh, that is the end of our action because those are the only two figures I even have. So, at the end of that activation of the SS Ventures crew, they had to roll again for having been uh, axed, or the possibility of being axed, and they failed their roll. What happens when you fail that roll is you have to roll a d6, you lose that many characters. I rolled two, two's all the characters I had left. So the game ended with one phase, one activation, one countdown, or uh, not countdown cards in the pulp game, one cliffhanging card to remain. Um, complete failure for the SS Venture crews. Uh, they, they did manage to uh, take the, uh, the one, the MacGuffin, uh, uh, but the, um, they end up being axed and uh, a number of plot points, uh, with three I think, were taken by the other, so they, they end up winning in the end. I hope in the process you managed to see something about how the game 7TV Pulp works. Uh, it's again a very flexible game. It's, um, you can use the different cast characters that come with it in several different ways like I just did for that game. You may see what I meant when I talked about how it has a more uh, movie feel with things like those, the two characters who changed positions entirely due to one of the cliffhanger cards. That kind of thing is very, very normal in the game. Uh, and in fact, sometimes those final finale cards can actually change the, the game completely flip around the game. So that's something to think about. If, if you like that sort of twist and unexpected uh, change, if you don't, if you find that too game altering and too much into the luck aspect, you know, that's something to think about if you're looking at the particular game. I, I particularly enjoy all of the seven TV games and look forward to playing more of them here on Cry Havoc. Uh, if you've enjoyed what you saw, uh, go ahead and like uh, this uh, video. Uh, feel free to subscribe. We'd love it if you subscribed. And we look forward to seeing you next time when we'll talk about a new game from Planet Smash Games, and that is Perilous Tales. See you next time.